you know, every morning we start our mornings with gratitude. Regardless of what's happening in the background, you need to be grateful for the things in your life. When you become fully grateful for the things in your life, that's when you're given more to be grateful for. So think deep, dig deep. Be specific in the things you're grateful for when you're writing down your gratitude. I never believed in that before, but it's when I started doing that that things started blowing up for me. It's when I started doing that that I opened my heart to the community and started believing in myself. So it's definitely important to practice gratitude. Um, at Lavelle News, we have some amazing things going on. We have the new daily planner in our back office. If you haven't seen that yet, you need to log in and check it out. It's absolutely amazing. The PPA cash leaderboard is up. Our next getaway in the wonderful, warm, and sunny Miami, Palooza, Denver, Colorado. I mean, how exciting is that? I'm just like excited to go see everything I can in Denver. I've always wanted to go there and this company is making that possible for me. So thank you. Shout out for Palooza being in Denver this year or next year. <laughs> the King Elite. That's another one I'm super excited for. A complete reformulation of our original three steps that's going to focus on what people want the most. Number one, New Year's resolution for 99.9% .9 of the world is weight loss. Let us be able to help them achieve that resolution instead of forgetting about it a month later. Um, new automobiles or trucks are being added to our auto ship plan. So, I mean, not authorship, I'm sorry, it's our 12K auto plan for um, us to have money towards our new cars. I personally, when I, I'm getting back to my 12K, so I'm excited for that. But when I was, I took the cash payout because I paid my insurance and I still had money left over for bills. So don't let nothing hold you back. Now, as far as team news, you're going to see some things. I don't know exactly what's going on. But we will fill you in with that later. Just remember you are you and you are awesome and you can do this. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it over to Lydia so I can take tons of notes. Good morning, y'all. And I just want to thank everybody for um, having me on today. Um, just as much as, you, you know, we like to hear from other people and learn from um, each other, no matter what team or when we joined or what our story is, um, it always fuels my fire to be able to share with others because that's what this is about right we share the three steps we share our stories and it's been a minute um, since I have kind of dug back in and thought back to where I started my journey where I am now um, the challenges the struggles that I deal with on a daily basis with my business and things like that and so I'm excited to share with you all today and what kind of is on my heart as I prepared for this zoom and thought what is it that I think people need to hear most, you know, I think it's to hear about those challenges and that just because you've hit a rank um, of 200K or 40K or 80K or whatever it is, but that epitome of 200K does not mean that that does not come with challenge. Um, and so I hope what I share with y'all today um, somehow resonates with you to keep pushing forward, to keep going for your goals and to keep putting one foot in front of the other, even if it's a small step, um, because that will make a difference in moving that needle in your business. So um, I want to talk, I want to kind of take y'all back to when I started back in 2014. Um, and I'm hoping everybody can hear me. I guess I'm good since no one's saying anything. <laughs> I just checked my volume here. Okay. Um, so let me just make sure it's up. Okay. Um, so before Thrive, I um, had two other unsuccessful businesses. Um, honestly, I don't think I ever really took them seriously because I wasn't passionate about them. Um, I was just kind of looking for that mom thing. Um, my husband traveled a lot. I have three children, um, two are twins, and then I have an older son. So um, I honestly, with that unsuccess that I had, um, the struggle that was there, I was tired of having stock and trying to sell stuff, quote, sell stuff. 
um, the passion just wasn't there. And honestly, I had a bad taste in my mouth for direct sales and MLMs. I was done. Um, I wanted no part of it. Um, I was tired of it. And I just felt like, you know, this is not for me. Um, but when I came across Thrive, um, my friend Mitzi reached out to me. And I was curious because she and I had a lot in common. We've been friends since college. And um, I knew what she was talking about had to be real. And I thought, okay, I will go ahead and try it, but I'm not buying it. I'm just going to get a three-day sample because <laughs> I was very skeptic. I was living on Red Bulls at the time um, and just thought that I do need to make some changes, but I don't know quite how to do that. I was in that ma ma major mom funk, I guess you could say. I was living on Red Bulls. I was napping every day at two o'clock. Uh, by five o'clock, I mean, I was short patient. I on patients, I um, was not um, just ready to face the evening with my kids, right? I think all moms can relate to that. And in general, right, you go off work, you're done. You don't want to have to do anything else. So with that said, um, I paid Mitzi $25, my very best friend from college, for a three-day sample. Yes, I paid her PayPal, and then she mailed it to me from Dallas to Houston. And within three days, y'all, I was sold. I was like, this product is incredible. This is helping me. I have not had a Red Bull. And if that's all that I gain from this is to get off these energy drinks, I, I'm in. Um, but I was just a customer. But on day three, I decided to flip to promoter because it was a no-brainer, right? It was free to promote. And there was no big catches there. And honestly, at first, I kept asking Mitzi, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm not going to get charged for my website. I'm not going to get charged membership fees. I'm not going to get charged all this stuff. I don't have to have an auto ship. Like I was kind of, um, sorry, y'all, there's a hair in my face. I was kind of just in shock and the light bulb just went off with the product and the way the business was set. I just thought, maybe I do want it. Maybe I do want to do this. Sorry, y'all, this is like bugging me. Okay. Um, Anyway, um, so I jumped in as a promoter within three days, messed up her VIP, <laughs> and um, she ended up having to find another customer. Y'all know how that works, and they've changed up a lot of things since back then. That was 2014 when I started, so just to kind of give you a little bit of a kind of a timeline. Um, back then it was just VIP 800, 1600, right? We've had a lot of changes recently, which are exciting. Like Shannon has talked about some. Um, the VIP 800, I hit in three days. 1600 was 14 days to the day. Um, was excited, right? We were growing. I was bringing in people. I was hitting bonuses. It was probably the biggest check I ever had as a stay-at-home mom, um, just working a little side gig. I'm sharing Thrive. Um, 4K was in three and a half weeks. 12K was eight months. Y'all, this is in 2014. Eight months it took me and my team to hit 12K. Um, another year for 40K. Another year and a few months to hit 200K, excuse me, to another year to hit 80K and another year and a few months to hit um, 200K. And that was May of 2018. Um, so joining in the beginning had zero to do with my success. And I hear that a lot of people are like, oh, they got in the beginning. They got lucky. They got on in the beginning. That's why they're, you know, have blown up. And that's just flat out untrue for me. <laughs> I joined when all these other leaders had joined you guys, um, leaders that y'all know, like y'all heard the names, Amber Manquist, you've heard of, I mean, Mitzi Driver, Billy Holderby. Those are some off the top of my head that I, um, have gotten to know better because of the team I'm on. But with that said, like I joined when they joined, right? And I wasn't blowing up like they were. My journey was slow and steady, the tortoise against the hair. Like it was just pulling my hair out. Why is it taking me so deck on long and everyone else is flying above me? Um, you know, Mitzi was hitting millionaire award and I was, I was sitting there chilling at 40 K, you know? So, um, that's one thing I will tell you is it takes time and you know, it's so hard, but you cannot compare your journey to other people's because your journey is yours. And I know you've heard that. I know it sounds cliche, but I catch myself in that all the time. Gosh, I should be up on stage. Why am I not millionaire yet? You know, um, I've been here for over eight years. What's wrong with me? Um, but just because I've been here that long doesn't mean that the secret sauce I've got and everything just blows up and works out, right? So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges because I think that's what people need to hear most is the reminder of you see the cover of everybody's journey on Facebook, right? Whoever you're following, and maybe there's leaders that you're attracted and you're watching their journey. You're like, wow, you know, they've just got it made. They're blowing up. That's what you see, but you don't see the behind the scene, right? You don't see the struggles they have. You don't see the challenges that they're dealing with that particular day. Um, so 
Um, I was always consistent. To this day, I'm still always consistent. Um, I might miss a day here or there, depending on what's going on in my life um, as far as posting. But for the most part, I post every day. I'm in stories every day. Um, I try to post a reel at least a few times a week. Um, I need to um, a game on that because I was doing one every day. So I need to get better at it. But with that said, I mean, I was nicknamed the consistency queen because of that. People were like, oh my gosh, Lydia, you're so consistent. How are you not this rank or that rank yet? You know, I don't know. I was just doing what I know I needed to, to be successful, whatever it took. And if I wasn't consistent, then that means people were not seeing what I was doing. Um, I lost an 80K in February of 2020. So we hit 200K. Things were great. I thought, oh my gosh, we made it. We made it. We're there. And then it crashed and burned, right? Um, it was that time of COVID. Um, I had a very strong leader that had been with me from the very beginning decide that she was going to leave and guys it sabotaged my entire team. Um, I cannot express to you the importance of connection. If you're sitting here right now and you've got people on your team that are not connected to a leader above you, you need to make some changes. Um, luckily, she had connected me to a lot of her people. Luckily, I knew who a lot of them were when we were friends on Facebook. Luckily, I had some of their connection aspect because when you have a large leader lead, you don't have all those emails from those leaders necessarily um, that go way down deep into their teams, right? The cloud office only shows us levels one to four. So if you have a rock star on level five, six, seven, you don't even have their email, much less their phone number to get in contact with them. So it can be very challenging when you're trying to dig in there and go, oh my gosh, I don't know Susie Q on level 15 because crap, I never got connected and now so-and-so is left. And so I've been dealing with a lot of that and it wasn't just her that left you guys. There was, there was some leaders in between her and I um, that decided they were just not in the game anymore either. And, um, but the one, the ADK, she flat out left to leave her account gone. And um, that was a hard blow for me. Um, that shed tears. It was, it was a hard thing to face. And, um, you know, it, it's been tough. It's been tough ever since then. I mean, well, I'm two years later and I still feel that, oh, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to help those people and I'm trying to quote unquote, rebuild, right? Because she left. And even though it was building at the same time, she was a very strong leader that I had that was my personally enrolled. So when she left, it was big. Um, so um, redline, yes, I'm redlined a lot. <laughs> Several times over and over and over the past eight years, I have been redlined every single month. Um, luckily, I have some other rock stars on my team. And a lot of times they redline me. And, um, and you know, but I know one time, uh, what was it? I think Melanie's on here, but it was her hubby that said, you know, uh, a red line is better than no red line. And I just thought, wow, that really speaks. You know, it's better to have that red line than nothing at all. If you don't have a red line, then obviously you don't have anything going on, right? So embrace it, work through it. You will get past it. It will even out eventually. Um, and guys, you still get paid commission on those red lines. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm red lined. I can't do anything, um, you know, all that. And so red line will happen in your business. It does not matter if you hit 200K, 80K, 40K, 12K, whatever. It's going to happen eventually. Um, it will happen. Plan on it. Know that it can. And just embrace it and move forward from it and learn from it. And I teach, you know, and that's one thing. I mean, I joke about it because it's true. If I didn't have a red line, I wouldn't have the, the amazing team that I have, right? So when my 80K left, do you think the other side redlined me? Heck yeah, they did. Okay. So um, that is something that everyone deals with. Know that you will have it happen if you haven't already. And embrace it. And I'm just being honest with you. If I'm telling you that you'll never have a red line, I'd be lying to you because that is not realistic in this business. It's going to happen. Um, so the main thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, fall forward without setbacks, there is no reward. And, and it's part of it for everyone, whether you see it or not. Um, do I put out there all the dirty struggles I've had in life and with this business? No, I don't. Not on to everybody in the masses, right? Because I want them to see the good things that Thrive has done for me, not the challenges that I deal along with the good, right? So what I put out there is positivity. It's funny. It's about me and my family. It's sharing what I love and um, my day-to-day. -day. 
So I'm not always putting out my struggle and that's just me and my personality and what I like to do as far as my business is concerned because my platforms are my business. So I don't, I, I'm very careful about what I do, but I'm very consistent. Um, and so I want to talk about that a little bit um, about the, that's kind of my topic today. If you haven't caught on yet is consistency. So I'm going to kind of dive into this and share some stuff with you guys. And I don't know if some of you have heard it before or not, but if you have, hopefully it's a good reminder for you and, and for me. And if you haven't, I hope it speaks to you. So um, I'm going to kind of take it back also. I hit 4K and I went to my first Thrive Local here in the Woodlands. Maria Dillard had attended. I'd never met her before. I think Susan Kaufman was, well, her name's not Kaufman now. Um, it's a different last name. I can't remember off the top of my head. But with that said, there were some strong leaders there that are still with this company today. And I went to the local by myself because I didn't have anybody. I didn't even met the girl that was going to be my ADK at that time that left. Like I was very new. Um, I went by myself. I sat there by myself and I just thought, let me just see what this is about. You know, let me kind of soak this in. So I did after the local, I had a dinner with Maria and some other leaders and met some really great thrivers that day that to this day, we're still friends. And, um, she looked at me and she said, well, how is your business going? And I said, well, to be honest with you, I'm frustrated. Um, the people that want that I want th that I've been trying to share with that I want to have join me are not, they don't want it. You know, I want it. They don't want it. And, um, it's just frustrating. I feel stuck. I'm not really growing like I wanted. Um, and she looked at me, she goes, well, you're just going to have to find the ones that do. And I just thought, what a simple answer. Um, and I think we forget that we get so caught up on reaching out to those same people, um, the same ones that we think, oh, they're, they'd rock at this. They'd be such a rock star. I want them to join me. And we do, right? We want them to join us, but it does not mean that they want it. And if they don't want it, that's not going to help us grow, right? They have to want it just as bad or more than you, or it's not even, I mean, it's not going to work. So that hit me. And I thought, that's what I've got to do. I've got to find the ones that want it. Because my BFF and my family were not the ones joining me, you guys. My sister barely bought Thrive for the first time um, about eight months ago. She watched me for over eight years, okay, before she decided to even give Thrive a try. I mean, not even try to sample, okay? The only family member that has ever bought Thrive for me before that was my mom, because it's your mom, right? They do that because they're your mom, <laughs> even though she was stubborn and still doesn't take it right. And my brother, my older brother, but he was not one of my big supporters. He just, he bought Thrive. He likes the product, but he doesn't talk about it. And he's to himself and he just takes it every day. Other than that, I have another sibling, you know, um, in-laws, everything. No one has bought Thrive. Okay, so those are not the people that took this team to 200K and they're still not. Um, so... Finding people took time and the people that joined me were people I hadn't talked to in 20 years was a perfect stranger that found me on social media. Um, they were not the ones that I knew. They were not my warm market. And I want to make that clear because I think we get caught up on warm market and nobody wants to join me. And I reached out to everybody. No, you haven't because there's people out there that need what you have. You just haven't met them yet. And are you going to be patient and take the time to run into them at Kroger or at HEB or at Walmart during the holidays or at the school PTO meeting while you're helping with your kid's party and let them watch you and let them join you when they are ready. And that's the biggest thing I had to realize too. They're not ready. I am. I was. They're not. I have. It's their time on their timeline, not mine. And that that's so hard to realize that you have no control over their decision. All you can do is share and bring them in the right way. And beyond that, it's up to them. You guys, it's up to them. Um, so I, I always like to refer back to my three C's. Um, make a change. Um, think about that. What are some changes that you need that you know you need to make in your business and you haven't yet, right? Maybe it's scary. Maybe you're nervous to do it. Maybe you're just overwhelmed and you're like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, right? Because there's a lot of things in this business that is changing constantly. Not only has had a lot of things changed for the better for our personal businesses, right? With all the stuff Shannon talked about that um, is amazing right now on the table. Not to mention, did y'all see the 12K airfare for the trip? In over eight years, that's never, ever, ever happened. That's the first time I've ever seen it. 
I promise you, you can ask any leader that has been here any length of time and they will tell you there's never been airfare for a 12K qualification for a trip. Let that be known. It's only been 40K plus. Um, so go after it. Um, so what can you do today that will help you move the needle um, that you haven't done, what, that you need to improve on? Y'all, you've got to get out of your comfort zone to grow this business. Um, the biggest thing right now that I'm seeing that is taking over social media, and I know y'all seen it, and whether you're doing it or not, it's happening. So you've got to Y'all, reels are a job. I'm not going to lie to you. When I batch or when I batch reels on Instagram or anything, when I first did them, I felt like such a fool. I felt like an idiot. I felt like I couldn't sync everything. It wasn't looking right. Some of the reels I look back on, and I'm like, what was I doing? Um, but it's still there. <laughs> um, but I embraced it. And I've tried to learn from others. And you know, jump into it. And they are a job because why? I feel like I have to look decent when I do a reel. It's like a whole mental thing. Like, right. Goodness forbid I do a reel without a little bit of makeup. Right. Cause I'm like, Ey, you know, I look rough or whatever. Um, but that is where social media is going. I don't know about y'all, but I've got three teenagers in this house. And do you know what they scroll on constantly, whether I like it or not is YouTube shorts. YouTube, short, YouTube shorts, um, which is the same concept as Facebook reels, which is the same concept as Instagram reels, which is the same concept as TikTok. It's just that I don't allow my, my kids don't have social media and I'm putting that off as long as possible. And I have a 17 year old that does not have a social media account. And I am totally fine with that. Um, and I think partly because he knows I'm all over it, that he can't get away with anything because I'm all on social media and he knows it. So with that said, that is where it's going. If you are not making videos, you are you are you are losing so many people that you could be reaching. It may not show in your numbers in your cloud office. It's probably not going to show on social media with the amount of likes you have. But that's not what you're looking at. I mean, I look at views weekly when I post reels, and it's not reels that are just about my business. It's reels about my life. I've tried to change up what I'm, what I'm doing personally. And some things that I found that bring people more in is I got caught up there for a minute doing reels just about Thrive. And I love Thrive and I want to share Thrive. But what I found for me is, gosh, I was doing, you know, I was posting a reel every single day and I was, I was being creative and I was coming up with stuff about Thrive. And what I found is it wasn't really growing my network. You know why? Because I was shouting right, Thrive from the rooftops, which is a great thing, but not everybody wants to hear about Thrive. I need to bring them into me first and then let them be open to hearing about it. So recently I've changed some things up. I've been starting to share more about my life, to be more personable. So people get to know me as a person. And it was easy for me to get caught up in Thrive because I love it, right? Everyone needs it. So I just want to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. But the thing is, is other people were not ready to hear about it. And they just thought, oh, she's just trying to sell. I don't really want to follow her. Um, and I find that I'm the same way. If I see somebody just throwing out product, product, product at me, even though I'm in the direct sales space and I may be curious about what it is, what is this product? What's this company? What are they about? I'm just curious. I want to know they're a competitor. Um, I don't really want to follow them because I'm like, I don't really want to see what their product there is. So think about that. Who are you trying to reach and how are you trying to attract them to you? Because they're not going to be attracted to you just because of Thrive. They're probably... I'm no, I'm no expert, but I'm just saying they are probably going to join you or um, be attracted to you because of something else, because of something else you brought them in on. So um, I will say just in the last 30 days, and I've not posted reels every day, shame on me, but 7 1,500 accounts reached in the last 30 days. That's on Instagram. And that's just from posting in the last 30 days. I have probably done. I'm just running this by y'all super fast. Probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine reels. Okay, that's not that great. That's not that great. Um, the rest are post. 
Now, if I go back and look at my insights, it's probably more. I don't want to spend a whole ton of time on that because that's not what this is about today, but it's about being consistent. And if you're not consistent with doing reels or you're not consistent with posting, do one and start, you know, start with what you can do because the, the reels and things can come later. But what I have found is you can batch reels, then you can post them on different pro profiles. So I'll make one reel and I'm posting that same reel on TikTok separately. I don't spread it out and have them all connected. TikTok, I've started posting on um, YouTube shorts. I've, I posted on Facebook reels and I posted on Instagram. So one reel, four platforms to reach as much people as possible. That I just talked about with who, how many accounts I've reached. That's just Instagram. Okay. And I'm no expert in social media. Like I'm still learning it. I have not found the secret sauce. Um, so figure out what it is today. Is it, is it reels? Is it something to, you know, to get out of your comfort zone? What is it that you need to do daily to move the needle in your business? Um, you know, I think we get caught up in, um, what we're not doing and we kind of get in a funk about that versus focusing on what we can and what we can can contribute to our business and you know what if it's not a real that's okay just start somewhere and you'll work your way up if it's a, if you're wanting to do reels just start doing them um there's so much stuff out there and honestly people aren't looking for perfection in reels i've had more views on the silly stuff that my kids have done than i ever have on a thrive reel okay um yesterday i post a christmas tree trick that I do with my tree. And I thought this is valuable. Somebody out there is going to want to implement this. And so that's how I was attracting people is how many mamas out there are tired, exhausted, doing all the Christmas decorating themselves because they're like me, maybe their husband travels, their kids are in school. Frankly, their kids don't have time for it. And I always put up way too much stuff. We don't do just one tree in this house. We do several. And so how many people would be interested in that or in, interested in my crock pot recipe to make their lives easier that day? Um, so that's what I've been trying to do is how can I get, where are the other mamas like me that, that I want to find like me that are tired, exhausted, living on caffeine, and they've got a list of stuff to do because guess what? It's the holiday. That's who I'm trying to reach. So how can I bring them into me? Not just screaming about Thrive and for them to stop drinking coffee. It's going to be Look at all these mama tips I have. And oh, by the way, there's Thrive in the background. Okay, when I do a crock pot recipe, I purposely put Thrive packets in the background of my crock pot <laughs> because I want them to see that word. I, I want to brand myself as the Thrive girl. And so that's one way that I do it. I, I trickle it in there, but I'm not always talking about it. So be creative in your approach and, and what you feel will attract those that you want to join you. Is it just talking about Thrive? Because I guess what, y'all, there are some leaders out there that rock that. They can just talk about Thrive and their teams, it looks like it's blowing up and it probably is. And that's their mojo. What is yours? Find that, try different things and see what works for you. Because I have, and I've realized recently, Lydia, you got to switch things up because what you've been doing is not working as well as you'd like, okay? You can post a reel every day, but it doesn't mean you're going to get a customer every day. So how are you going to bring those people in? Um, be confident. Those that are meant to join you will, regardless of what you do, regardless if your post flopped, regardless if you don't get a like, regardless if you look perfect, Reminder to myself, regardless um, of the struggles you have or what you put out there, or your video might have looked stupid. They're going, if they are meant to join your team, it is going to happen. Okay. So quit overthinking about, oh, am I going to say the wrong thing? You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Have y'all ever thought about that? Like, I think we overanalyze these things. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person that is meant to join you and that their heart and mind is open to what you have. Um, so stick with it, be confident, go with what you have and where you are. And then the word change, be confident, but make those changes that you need to make, whatever that is with what's happening um, and what's going on. Um, trust yourself in the process, prepare to go for no. I think a lot of people that come in and they see the leader they joined, they're like, oh man, look, she's blowing up. I really want to make some weekly income. I want to do this. this looks, she makes it look so easy. And then you get in there and you get that, or you get that new promoter in there. They're all excited, right? Until they get told no. And then what happens? What happened to them? 
they're not here. They're, they're not even share and thrive, right? They got told no, and it's sabotaged them. It kicked them down. We have got to prepare for the word no. We have got to prepare promoters that come in and even ourselves that we have to prepare for that. We have to be realistic with people we're bringing in. Yes, the sharing is easy. Yes, the product is easy. Yes, putting it out there. Y'all, that's the easy part. The no's and the ignores and the objection is the hard part, right? Um, and I will tell you a story when I uh, when I first started, not when I first started, but after I'd been here a while and Thrive Skin, I don't know if those of you that were around when Thrive Skin launched, okay? But I, for the first time ever, went live on Facebook. And y'all, this is why I love Thrive too, because I'm not, I, I put on makeup or whatever, but I am not a makeup girl, okay? I am not gonna get online and show you how to get ready because I'm a hot mess when I put makeup on. It doesn't look good when I do it. Um, I see these other girls do these makeup stuff and I'm like, well, they, they're rocking it because I could not do that, period, end of story. That's why I love Thrive, it's so easy. Uh, but I did go live with bare skin no makeup and show the Thrive Skin steps, right? Like the peel, the this and that, because I was excited about it. And I thought, Lydia, if you want your team to do this and you want them to get out of your comfort zone, you got to get your honey on that Facebook and you got to do it too. So I did. Y'all, my brother made a video making fun of me doing that and sent it out to the whole family. Poking fun, uh, made fun of me. He did a pretty good job because it was pretty uh, on point. But with that said, like it kind of upset me. I just thought, Really, I'm over here trying to make an income for my family as a stay-at-home mom. I've done pretty dadgum good, I think. And you're poking fun at what I'm doing and you're my brother. Like you're supposed to be supportive and love me and all you're doing is making fun of me. Um, my sister-in-law that used to be my very best friend, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> that's another story, you guys. But when we hit 12K, she looked at me straight in the face and she said, we never thought you'd do it. That only fueled my fire. So the people closest to you are going to be the ones with the biggest objection, the ones that will tell you no for eight years until they tell you yes. When I tried to sign my sister up for a free account, do you know what her words were? Because we were doing that free account, like $2 for every account. Y'all know those things Lavelle does every once in a while. Well, she didn't have a free account yet. And I thought, oh, I could sign her up. That'd be $2 and at least get her in the door. Do you know what she said to me? Um, I said, can I get your email, Aim? Because I want to set you up a free account. She goes, isn't that cheating? She didn't want to give me her email. I could have done it regardless and lied and didn't even ask her permission. But that's how ugly she was. Y'all, this is these are my siblings. These are these are my brother and sister. Okay. So with that said, prepare yourself for the haters. Prepare yourself for the no's. Know that it's gonna happen and you just have to keep going. And now, now you guys, sisters thrive in. Now they're like, oh, you know, no one makes fun of me anymore because they're still seeing me do this. And they're like, she legit is at home. We all are working and have nine to five jobs and she's making income from home on her own time. Like, I think they all look at it and they're like, and I think one big thing was, is, you know, when family things hit or life hits you in the face, right? My mother had a stroke about a year and a half ago. It was a very difficult time for our family. It was devastating. It's been a hard road to get our, what thank the Lord. She is here still. She's not the same, but we will take it as take her as she is. I love her to pieces, but that time was a very hard time for our family. And I had to step up in ways I never thought I could do. Um, with that said, my siblings saw it firsthand. They saw my thrive put to work because they saw what I had to do on a daily basis. I was the sibling and I'm not tooting my horn, but I was the one because I didn't have to work quote, quote, I was the one that went and took care of mom before home health came in and, and the family saw that. And I think that's when they changed their opinion. I mean, it took a slap you in the face, knock you down on your butt experience for the people closest to me to go, whoa, that stuff must work because she's got energy like I've never seen. I mean, y'all, I had that house perfect. I had meals prepared perfect. I mean, I was on my A game and my mother could not even feed herself. It took that for my family and the people that love me most to go, whoa, this stuff may work. Maybe I should try it. And it still took my sister a year to purchase it. So what I'm saying, if people are watching you, don't let all that negativity get in your head and screw you up. Just keep doing you. Just keep doing it. Ignore what they're saying. Move on. Let them make jokes. Because guess what? I'm laughing to the bank. He can make a funny joke, but I'm laughing to the bank, right? So 
because I'm making a weekly income, you know, and, and, and I mean, I'm not having to answer to anybody, answer to myself and what a blessing that is. And I'm so grateful that I said yes and opened my eyes to something different and it's not for everybody, but everybody can do it. Right. And Last but not least, stay consistent. That is my biggest thing for today. Um, and I know I, I'm, I'm preaching, preaching, preaching. Y'all have heard that word. It's probably almost like, oh, it's the dreaded consistent word. Hate it. It sucks. <laughs> that means keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, you know, every day it gets exhausting, right? You're thinking maybe today I'll find that person. Maybe today they'll say yes. Maybe today, you know, and you keep going and you keep going, but maybe things are taking longer. Maybe you're in a stage of your business that could be several months that all you're doing is planting seeds and it feels like you're beating a head against a wall. But guess what? If you are not out there with your mouth open, your business is not either. Um, so you have got to keep going. You, you know, you've got to push through those challenges. When you have a leader leave, that is heartbreaking because y'all were like sisters and now you don't even talk anymore. She just left. She just left, right? She went behind your back. She tried to steal your team. She left. Things are going to happen and you have to push forward, not only for yourself and the goals that you have, but also for your team, because the ones that do want to do this, I don't care if it's one person on your team that is still working. They believed in you. They trusted you. They said yes to you and they are here for a reason. And if it's just you and them, then, then y'all, you lock arms with them and you run and just do your thing because the people will, will join you that are meant to. And honestly, I, I have fun with that. If I've got that, you know, that rock star and I'm locking arms with them. I mean, you don't need nobody else because you're going to do it together, right? You're going to do it together and you're going to make it happen because you know you have each other's back, you know? Um, so I want to talk about a few things that I do. I'm hoping this helps y'all that I have done over the years. You better believe y'all. I have made so many mistakes. I have tried so many things that so-called work for other people, um, tips, tricks, tools that they use. Other than, of course, we have a fabulous cloud office. I love the planner they just put in there yesterday. I thought that was so cool. Um, so these things are great, right? The Thrive app, um, I don't know about y'all, it's still super new and I am not a techie girl by any means. Um, it takes me a little bit longer to learn things tech <laughs> than it does maybe the average person. I'm just, I'm getting better. That is an area that I've improved drastically on, but I would, I, I'm not great at it. That's why I say social media, I'm not, I have not perfected it. I've just learned and applied and learned and applied and then changed the way I do it and learned and applied. like. I'm trying to find my groove because just because it works for Susie over here doesn't mean it's going to work for me, right? I'm, I'm trying to find out my thing. With that said, there's a few things that I do know work for me. Um, number one, the dreaded calendar. I know y'all heard that. It's been shouted from the rooftops. I don't do my calendar like a lot of people probably or you know, I just don't, I do put things in here like non-negotiables, locals, um, have my time blocked a little bit so I know where I have to be and when to keep myself organized, especially with my kids and my husband traveling. I play single mom like 95% of the time right now with the way his job is. So I have to be organized in order to, to get in what I need to every day because I'm doing everything in this house for everybody, okay? So I have to make time for me and my business and figure out what I'm going to do to work that. Um, and I don't know if I'm not organized. So I do get, I just got this off of Amazon for like nine bucks. I'll be getting a new one for 23, but this is my lifeline. I come check it every morning. What do I have to do today? You know, and that way I'll know what my day looks like. Sometimes the day before, a lot of times I'll look a week in advance and kind of see what I've got going on. But that's where I put it. Like the Zoom today was scheduled weeks ago. I put it in my calendar. Right. So I know it's going to happen. That time is blocked. And I know that that's where I'm going to be. So um, the other. I always have my goals set. I write my IMs in the calendar, like on the top. So every month I'm rewriting them and I can see them throughout the month of whatever my goal is. Um, and I. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm getting a text from my daughter. <laughs> um, <clears throat> The other thing is my Thrive binder. Um, I made this a while back. Um, I just got this binder from 
um, Home Depot. I like it because it's leather bound, so it's bendy. It's easy to travel with. Um, but I have specific, I have notes in here that I've liked because I am a writer um, and I have it broken down into sections. I have potentials. It's hard to see you guys. I know. I'm sorry. Um, I have potentials, samples, customers, promoters. Most importantly, Facebook and Instagram list and IPAs and calendar. So I have a hard copy of my business in this binder. I do not trust social media. How many times this has crashed and burned on us? And then what happens to all your connections? Um, so I have printouts and I will periodically update that. Um, at six months, I will update it or I will download it to my computer. That way I have it if something does go down with Facebook, right? We remember how that happened. And after that, I thought, okay, I got to get more organized. I need a hard copy because there's a lot of connections on Facebook that I know, but I wouldn't be able to know how to get a hold of them, even though they're old friends, if I don't have the name and their information and better yet in my cloud office. But if they're not there yet, at least I've got something to go off of. So get organized. I mean, first and foremost, you cannot stay consistent if you do not get organized. And that's a big one for me because I'm constantly changing things. But y'all, there was a time like things were pretty much a hot mess. I had a stack of, of notebooks with notes. And I mean, it was just a mess. And I thought, no wonder I can't get anything done. I'm a disaster. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know who I'm reaching out to. Where's the list I wrote last week? Um, it's mixed in with uh, 500 other lists that I've wrote, uh, wrote over the past seven, eight years. Um, so I always put myself in VIP reset. I'm always trying to find my next four, my next four. Who are my two new promoters? Who are my two new customers? And even if I fall short and don't find them, I just keep going. But I always try to put myself in that mentality and take myself back to that first week, two weeks in my business to try to find my next new people. Um, I always tell myself qualifying is not an option, even if I cannot go. Um, so... That's something that as a mom with a husband that travels, I've missed some trips over the past few years with COVID and different things going on. Um, my kids are at an age where I need to be present and I can't just leave and go off whenever I want, right? That Those days will come, but they are all teenagers and it's a critical stage in their life. And with a dad that's not here often, mama's got to got to be here. I got to know what's going on. I got to be in their business. So sometimes it just doesn't work out. I don't get to go. It is what it is. Um, but I always try to qualify and I make that a non-negotiable, even if I can't go. And if I fall short in the qualification, that's okay, right? You're moving on. But you always set that goal to try to do it and give yourself that mentality that it's not an option. I have to qualify. And Nine times out of 10, that works for me. Every once in a while, I get stuck somehow. Maybe I don't get it or whatever, but for the most part, it works for me. Um, so I'm going to share a few other tools I have that have really helped me in my business because I don't know if these are ones y'all have heard of, but like I said, other than what Thrive and Lavelle offers us, which the new app is great, but I have not learned all the ins and outs of that app. Honestly, I'll be honest with you, when I get on there, I get a little confused, <laughs> but it's just going to, that's my brain. It's just going to take me a while to kind of embrace it and learn it. Um, but one of my favorite tools right now is boards. Um, and I don't know if y'all heard of boards. But it is an app that um, it's right here on my phone. Okay. And this app is free. And in this app, I don't know if y'all can see this, but you see where I have at the top, I have photos, lunch and learn, first 14 day scripts, welcome and story graphics, tips and information, social media posts and photos, message scripts. I mean, I could go on. These are tools that I can share with my team at a simple link if they have this app for free. So when I found out about this, I can even put my website links in here. And then if I'm messaging somebody on social media, um, I'm gonna pretend here that I'm messaging Melanie or something. Um, and let me, actually I could do myself too. Pretend I'm messaging myself. I message stuff to myself all the time. And so I come down here like I'm gonna type. So I'm clicking on that little button like I'm going to type and do y'all see this little circle down here at the bot well, no down here I'm backwards it'd probably be easier if I had the share screen but I don't plan on doing a whole but do you see everything in my app pops up y'all um and so if I wanted to share my link I go to where I made a little folder that has the little world on it there's my links my husband's link and I can share that at a click of a button boom there it is to my potential she's got my link now 
this, I made this before the Thrive app was launched. <laughs> so like I said, I have perfected this app. I have learned how to use it. It's been a great tool for me. Um, I know that I'm going to use more of the Thrive app, but I've got to kind of learn more about it. And I feel like more trainings are coming with that. This is my comfort zone, <laughs> this app. So this is why I still use this one a lot. I need to get better at the other one. Let me just make that clear. Um, and so anyway, with that said, this app is amazing. I have added in the app where I have my follow-ups um, and I make folders. I have my follow-ups. I have my post ideas. When I think of a post idea that's really good, I save it. Y'all, these are all my personal post ideas that I have come up with. Um, and these are just my personal. I also have another file that I can share with my team that I have shared with my team. Um, so that way, if there's a day that I'm like, what the heck am I going to post? I'm not in the mood today. I had a bad morning. My daughter was drama. I'm just not feeling it. Whatever. I can just come in here and find a post. I don't have to think about what I'm doing. It's already done for me. I just have to attach a picture. So simplify your day-to-day -day routine by getting organized. And this app has been amazing. And yes, I put all this information in there, but guys, if I can set this app up, anybody can do it. Cause like I said, I'm not a techie, excuse me, a techie girl. Um, so with that said, um, that's one of my favorite, favorite apps right now. I even have first 14 day scripts for new promoters that I can feed to them. Um, VIP 800, six, I need to change, I need to add Maria's video in here, but I have VIP 800, 1600. I mean, there's a few things I need to update since the changes. But with that said, I mean, social media photos, you know, that I have in here, how, to, like, this is, um, post for like the team and stuff that I've organized where I have what they what picture they can post with the um what picture with the post that puts the easy button and makes things extremely duplicatable so if you have not heard about boards you haven't used boards I encourage you download it it's free play with it figure out what works for you because I it's so simple to pass on to your team and have instant duplication for your new people that join you um, and for your existing team to give them ideas of what to say and what to do. I think I even have a training on my YouTube um, with boards. So if you look up Lydia Laws on YouTube, I, I'm, I'm almost positive it's there. I'll double check after this and let Shannon know. Okay. Um, the other thing I use, this is the only thing that I actually pay for for my business because I find that it's worth my sanity is Project Broadcast it is a text app that I love. Um, and I, um, it once again, it had to be set up or whatever, but I love that at one click of a button, I can message several hundred people. Um, if there is a promotion or there is an, a Thrive thing or whatever, that puts the easy button on follow up. So if you're not using some type of thing to help streamline your reach outs to reach the mass amount of people in the shortest amount of time, guys, do yourself that favor. Get yourself organized um, with something simple that helps you. Um, I, it takes work. But after that, your day-to-day -day work is so much less. And I've just found that that helps me tremendously. My husband helped me get those people in there because, again, I'm not very techie. But I know Mitzi set up her project broadcast, no problem. So um, look into it. There's training videos on um, social media for it. Um, the guy that um, actually made project broadcast is a friend of Mitzi Drivers. Those of y'all, I know she's a millionaire earner. She's my direct upline and, and who I signed with personally. Um, but she actually had him make this app because we needed something at the time. This was a few years ago. Um, now there's Thrive app <laughs> and they're all, messaging aspects there but what I have found so far looking in the Thrive app is it's not not all my people are in there so anyway I'm still trying to figure that out but if you need something in addition you know look at that and figure out what works for you I plan on using Project Broadcast for a while because it took a lot of effort to get those people in there and I wanted another way other than just um what what we had at the time at our disposal so I do use that. A QR code. If you have not made one, make one. There's a free QR code generator that you can get an app on, on your smartphone and make one. It's super simple. I use that out on the go if people ask me about my business. Um, if I have time, I try to go, can I share my personal um, digital business card with you? And that way I can get their cell number and text it to them. Um, if I can't do that, then I'll have them scan the code. The reason why, and I love the code, Okay, but if I if they scan the code, I don't have a way to follow up with them. 
Okay. They have all control. I want control. If I share my personal business card with them, because they've asked about Thrive. And I find if I ask them that way, can I share my personal business card with you or my personal digital card with you? They say yes, because I'm not asking for their phone number. Then I go, oh, well, what's your cell number? And then they're open to give it to me because it's all about the way I asked. Can I share it with you? I'm not asking for something. I'm asking to share it. To contact them, then I can put them in my tech stack. Um, then they're on my follow-up. Okay, you still follow me? So I do that a lot, but the QR code is great for on the go. You don't have time for that. Maybe someone catches you off guard or getting in your car or something weird like that because it happens. The QR code is great for them to scan so they have it immediately in their phone. Um, the milkshake app, I love that. It's kind of like a hit off link tree, but it's a step up. Um, I set up that a little while back. It's kind of like a little website, but you basically can write about you. You can share links in there. And I find that it's a great little link to put on Instagram, TikTok, um, any of those platforms other than Facebook, because Facebook has a lot more room to put stuff. The other platforms do not. And it's one click and they have everything they need. You know, you can implement different things in there. And if you look on my Instagram, it's Lydia Marie Laws. You'll see my um, my milkshake there and you can kind of see, but that that's free. It's free, you guys. I don't pay for any of that. And it has all my stuff. And I was able to type a story about me in there, a little bit about Thrive, share my link, share some pictures so they can see who I am and what I'm about, not just here's a link, right? They're learning about you. And that's what I was, I'm trying to get across to my people is, um, and my um, audience is I want them to learn about me, not just about Thrive. So I've been trying to be better with that because I get caught up in Thrive because I'm so excited. And then I realize, oh, I just kind of threw up on everybody for like a week. So I have to switch things up. Um, um, the last one that I love is my car decal. But let me tell you all something about this really quick. Um, I'm about to the end of this. And if you have any questions uh, before, I know we probably have to close out pretty quick. Um, I have an LV logo on two sides of my Lexus that I love and I have yet to put shame on me. This is what I need to do um, is I want to put a QR code website, something on the back window. And I just haven't taken the time to, to do it. Okay. Either getting one on Lavelle gear or, or getting one printed and made myself with maybe my Instagram name. I just, I haven't taken the time to go, okay, Lydia, what do you want on your car? Cause I kind of want the less is more mentality um, for me. So I've been trying to figure that out because it doesn't do me much good in carpool line. If I just have LV, people don't know what LV is. And here's a prime example. The other day I pull into my driveway and on the way down the street, I passed by a mama walking down the road and I hadn't really met her yet. She was further down the street. I think she's newer and I just hadn't met her. She stopped me when I caught on the car. She goes, girl, I love your little Louis Vuitton. And I thought, what? Y'all, she was looking at my LV and she thought, she thought I was advertising for Louis Vuitton. And I thought, Lydia, this is awful. Um, of course, I tried to explain to her it's my business, but she was attracted to that. She said, every time I see that sticker, I just love it. My husband and I have separated and he bought me my first person. It was a Louis Vuitton. And every time she saw my car, it was like a sign that things were going to work out for her husband, you know, bless her heart, like whatever joy it brought to her, like sometimes those simple things, there's what get us through, right? But I thought to myself, okay, Lydia, you really have got to get better with the whole car advertisement, because she thinks you're advertising Louis Vuitton, and that's not helping your business. So if you have a car decal, make sure you have something else with, that just was kind of a a, a, a slap going lid, get your act together and get something else on your car, because that was so bad. Um, so anyway, um, that's kind of what I had for today, Shannon. I hope that that helps y'all somehow um, just to know that you, you're not alone in this journey and the struggles that it can bring. And if you're not where you want to be, um, you're going to get there, but you just have to keep going. And I know that's easier said than done. There is days that we get up and maybe it's a hard day with your kids or whatever. Life is hitting you in the face and you need to step back a minute that's okay. Give yourself grace and get back to it. We all have that time. Um, there's times I've been really, really good with all my reels and all my this. And there's times that I haven't been as good because I'm dealing with a lot. Mom had a stroke. I've got all these things going on. You know, now it's not just my house. I have to get ready for Christmas. It's hers too. And I'm grateful to do it, but it does take away from my day to day. And I have to be more intentional 
um, with what I'm doing and when. Um, so I hope that that helps you all. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, so just remember, it's not when they'll, when they're going to join you. It's not, if, well, what was the, how was I going to say that? It's not if they're going to join you, it's when. It's not if they're going to buy Thrive, it's a win. You just have to stay consistent for them to have the opportunity to order Thrive from you. And if they don't order Thrive from you, they're going to go order it from someone else when they're ready. So anyways, I hope you'll have a great Wednesday and I hope this helped you. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon, and I will turn it back over to you. Oh my goodness. All I can say is thank you so much. This was exactly what I needed to hear today. Your real talk is amazing. I will get the replay out, guys. Lydia, I will send you a copy of the replay. And thank you. And I can't wait to schedule you for a future Zoom. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.